Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Karaman and welcome to The Main Cave. This is the month of November, or as we like to call it, Movember, where we will talk to you about men's health issues. I'm really lucky and fortunate to have my partner, Dr. Carlos Ramos here with me today to talk about prostate cancer. He has been in our community for over 20 years and just want to welcome you to The Main Cave. Hey, Karma. Uh, today we're going to be talking about prostate cancer. It's a topic very close to home, uh, as the disease happened to run in my family. I actually have two uncles that died from prostate cancer and other uncles on my dad's side of the family who have prostate cancer and still dealing with the disease. Tell me more about the prostate. What is the prostate? Prostate gland is a gland mostly for reproductive purposes, sitting kind of at the exit of the bladder. And uh, again, as we get older, tends to misbehave, that being with benign prostate enlargement or prostate cancer. So it can grow as you get older? As you get older, the prostate tends to grow. So what, what do you do to screen for the prostate, prostate cancer? Usually we use the blood test called the PSA, stands for prostate specific antigen, as well as a D-directal examination. Uh, it's recommended that, that depending on who do you read, start at the age of 40, and those who have a family history or, or out of African-American descent, or whoever wants to, you know, wants to get screened at that age. And then uh, depending on the numbers or the trajectory, the numbers over time, you can tailor uh, further screening and PSA testing. So African-American men, these patients who have a family history, they need to be screened even earlier. Absolutely, absolutely, Start, starting at the age of 40. Is it a pretty painless screening process? Uh, it depends on the opinion of the patient, but <laughs> mostly it is. It's a, a blood test and again, a, a D rectal, rectal examination. examination. Now that's done annually, essentially, if the levels are okay? Yes. What is a normal PSA level? Well, PSA tests have been controversial, so there is no PSA that guarantees the absence of prostate cancer or one that guarantees the presence of prostate cancer. So we usually look at trends over time how the PSA behaves over time. So a person can have a PSA that is a little bit above normal, but stable for a number of years. And that person may not have prostate cancer. At the same time, you can have somebody who has a normal number, but rising over a period of time, which is a matter of concern. So how would you diagnose prostate cancer? Is there a procedure that you do to determine if someone has yeah. prostate cancer? Well, when you have the suspicions of prostate cancer, the next step usually is to do a biopsy of the prostate, uh, which can be uh, painful for some patients. Uh, there are other auxiliary tests that you can use to help you decide who needs a biopsy or who doesn't. But um, well, with a biopsy, you know, the patient, we numb the patient up and, and make sure that they're as comfortable as can be, right? Yeah, I usually tell them it's like going to the dentist. They're gonna numb their teeth <laughs> and work on it. So usually we numb the prostate when we do it in the office on patients opt to have the procedure done. As so we give them that flexibility if they feel more comfortable in the operating room under some sedation. Absolutely. To where they just will completely be knocked out. Absolutely. Okay, so someone comes in and, and now they've got prostate cancer. Is this a death sentence? Are they going to die from this? It is not a death sentence. Uh, usually depends on what stage the prostate cancer is. Uh, if, if caught earlier, you have an excellent chance of cure. Uh, and treatment ranges from either observation, surgery, radiation, uh, there are options of more newer options of cryosurgery or freezing of the prostate or high frequency ultrasound. So I was always trained that um, with the statement that most men die with prostate cancer than from prostate cancer. That's Would correct. you agree with that? That's correct. And we usually look at the life expectancy. The person okay. have a life expectancy of less than 10 years, then it may not make much sense for treating those patients. Somebody have a life expectancy of more than 10 years, then it makes sense to treat those patients. So it's not clear cut. It's more of really just a really good patient rapport, a discussion between the patient and the physician. Yes, a what big, they want to do. big and long discussion. Absolutely. Big and long discussion. So um, you mentioned different options. So I know surgery is a big one. Now you trained at a time when you did a lot of surgery open, but you've also have been doing probably hundreds, if not thousands, of robotic prostatectomies. Um, tell, can you tell us a little bit more about the Da Vinci robot and the role in urologic surgery, particularly prostate cancer? Da Vinci robot, in my opinion, has revolutionized uh, 
prostate cancer treatment. Um, used to be an operation, a person may stay in the hospital three to five days or even longer. Now, in some patients, it can be less than 24 hours wow. before they go home. What about blood loss? Blood loss, uh, minimal. Uh, I cannot recall when was the last time we had to transfuse somebody after having the prostate removed. And are functional outcomes improved? In my opinion, they're better uh, in terms of continence as well as potency because of the visualization that the robot allows you to. So continence is leaking urine and potency is, you know, the ability to get your nature up or your erections yeah. for our viewers. Um, so now you have a patient who has had robotic surgery for their prostate. How are you going to follow them? What are you going to do for these patients? We usually recommend, I actually I would like to do a PSA every three months for the first year. Then after that, every four to six months, and that will all depend on the pathology. Can you tell me more about um, um, penile rehabilitation and the bladder program for early potency and incontinence? Uh, usually, uh, in terms of penile rehabilitation, we use uh, oral medications or injections to reproduce an erection. Uh, most patients are able to achieve an erection with help. Some of them decide to go that route. Some of them decide to wait. And in terms of potent continence, uh, those patients usually get enrolled in the bladder program, which is uh, like a physical therapy for the pelvic floor to enhance their recovery after having the prostate removed. One of the nice things about the robotic platform is you have 10 times visualization. Yes. And so you can really see those nerves as well as when you're putting the bladder back to the urethra, which ultimately improves functional outcomes. So. You know, you have a patient you've been following for prostate cancer. It sounds like it's becoming more of a chronic disease yes. than a condition that you die from. But what if a patient comes back and their PSA begins to rise? Um, what do you do at that point? Well, again, it all depends. Most patients, if they have a recurrence, which is cancer coming back, tends to happen in the area where the prostate was. Those patients can be salvaged with radiation. Okay. Which some patients may have disease somewhere else. And depending on the location, if it is a, a small area or if it is systemic, the treatment will hinge on that. Yeah. So Dr. Ramos runs our APC program here and we have many patients enrolled. Um, and in that program, there are a lot of things that you can offer these patients who've got cancer in their bones, bone pain, is that correct? Yes, APC stands for advanced prostate cancer. Um, Thank you for that. And basically there is a new pipeline of medications that really have offer a lot of hope for these patients in the long term and allows them to live a little bit longer yeah. when uh, before we didn't have many options usually if they fail and they fail radiation they probably were left with you know chemotherapy now there is a lot of other things that we can do to allow these patients to live a little bit longer and with better quality of life Better quality, more family gatherings, more Thanksgivings, more Christmases, yeah. et cetera. So uh, before we leave, uh, Carlos, what can you tell our viewers and our, our population about prostate cancer? It, you know, it sounds like it's not a death sentence. Many, many men live with prostate cancer, then die from it, and it's become more of a chronic disease. Did I summarize it pretty well? Yes. Was there anything else you'd like to add? I just think it's very important you communicate with your physician. It doesn't have to be a urologist. You can talk to your primary care doctor, get your prostate examined, get your PSA test, get to know your numbers, get to know your PSA numbers, how they change over time. I think it's very important. Thank you so much for joining me, Thank uh, you for Carlos. And stay tuned on uh, for more future episodes on The Main Cave. Next week, we'll plan to sit with Dr. Hitt uh, discussing bladder cancer. Thank you.